Tea Garden Star is an M-type red dwarf in the constellation of Aries. It lies about 12 light years from the solar system. It's so dim that at magnitude 15, it can only be seen through large telescopes. Barely even a star at all, it emits just one 1369th the luminosity of our sun. It is an unremarkable star in every respect, bar two. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our exoplanet series and take a closer look at one of the smallest, faintest systems of all, Tea Garden Star. So let's get to it. So Vega, what are those two aspects that make Tea Garden Star so interesting? Well, first of all, we've talked quite a lot recently on this channel about M dwarf stars, and that a small percentage of them are not actually flare stars. Tea Garden Star is one of four such type stars in our local area the others being Lalande 21185, Gliese 1061 and Leuton star. Teagarden star is therefore relatively stable, which is unusual for such a small star. Second, the system has two confirmed planets, both of which could potentially harbour liquid water, and indeed, one of which is possibly the most Earth-like planet we've found in all history. Teagarden star is also relatively young in our own understandings. Astronomers have long thought it was quite likely that many undiscovered dwarf stars exist within 20 light years of Earth. This is because stellar population surveys show the count of known nearby dwarf stars to be lower than otherwise expected. It seems obvious that these stars are dim and easily overlooked. With an apparent magnitude of just 15.1, Teagarden star was unsurprisingly then discovered as recently as 2003, while on a study tracking for asteroids years earlier. To put that in perspective, Pluto is roughly 2.5 times brighter than Teagarden star from Earth, so we're talking about very, very faint indeed. Teagarden star has such a high proper motion, that is, movement relative to our Sun, that astronomers noticed its movement relative to the background of the Milky Way. Indeed, fast forward to July 2019, and a team of more than 150 scientists, led by Matthias Zechmeister, published an article supporting the existence of two candidate exoplanets that are in an orbit around Teagarden star. Because of the faintness of Teagarden star, the radial velocity method was used to detect possible exoplanets. Some may already know, but interestingly, the radial velocity method detects by observing effects on a host star's radial velocity, the speed at which it is moving towards or away from the Earth. As the planets tug on the star, its movement slows down or speeds up depending on where the planets are found in the orbit. To accomplish this feat, the team used Spain's Cala Alto Observatory, found near Almeria, in the province of Andalusia. After three years of dedicated observation, two periodic radial velocity signals emerged one at 4.91 days, which became T Garden Star B, and another at 11.41 days, which became T Garden Star C. As I mentioned in our exoplanet series, we've closely followed the prospects of exoplanets orbiting elite red dwarf stars nearby. We've documented Leuton Star Gliese 1061 and Lalande 21185, so don't forget to check out those videos if you haven't already. T Garden Star, though, is slightly different from those in that it is truly and absolutely tiny. An M7 red dwarf, it has a mass of just 0.09 solar masses and a radius barely larger than 10% of our Sun or similar to Jupiter. This means it has an incredibly small habitable zone, albeit still larger than a theoretical white dwarf's habitable zone. By my calculations, the optimistic limit where we might realistically expect to find water begins at just 0.02 astronomical units, stretching out to 0.048. Teagarden star B orbits just within the inner edge of the green zone as we can see here in the graphic. This means it is possible that the atmospheric composition could allow for stable liquid water on its surface. Likewise, as we also see here, Teagarden C is on the edge, although this time the outer limit, and is thought to have an equilibrium temperature of around minus 47 degrees Celsius. Of course, if the planet had a thick atmosphere, its surface could be much warmer than this, and we must bear in mind that our own Earth's equilibrium temperature is actually minus 18 degrees Celsius. Our atmosphere maintains temperatures well above that. Focusing now on Tea Gardens B, it is actually the fourth closest potentially habitable exoplanet as of April 2020. And it's even more exciting because Tea Gardens B is predicted to have a minimum mass of 1.05 Earth masses, and this makes it almost identical to the Earth. This value would be the true mass of the planet if the orbit was not inclined from the Earth's perspective, so it's unlikely to be totally accurate, as we would have to be looking almost directly perpendicular to the system. 
Teagarden Star B is likely to be a rocky world, and indeed it may even have an ocean of water on its surface. We imagine what such a world might be like, a similar size to our Earth, and receiving roughly the same amount of warmth from its star, although much of the light would be reddened, which would certainly make for an interesting landscape, as we see depicted here. Like most red and brown dwarfs, Teagarden Star emits most of its energy in the infrared spectrum and is also older than the Sun, with an age of around 8 billion years. So life certainly has had the time and opportunity to evolve within this system. Teagarden C habits on the outer edge of the habitable zone at 0.0443 astronomical units, which means the planet could potentially see liquid water flowing, but it would likely depend on other factors. Again, it is thought to be very similar in size to the Earth, with 1.11 Earth masses this time, so slightly more massive than our own world. We again imagine what such a planet might be like, perhaps similar to our own world, but with the polar ice caps extended far southwards. Much of the world icebound, but with pockets of habitability around the tropics and the equator. Of course, both of these worlds are highly likely to be tidally locked to the host star, so as we've mentioned on this channel, it adds another conundrum to the mix, where habitability would depend much on the planet's ability to spread warmth around, perhaps by thick cloud covering on the side facing the star, or warm ocean currents circulating the darker sides. Alongside Leuton's star, Gliese 1061 and Elande 21185, Teagarden star is a member of an elite group of red dwarfs in our local area that are quiet and could potentially support habitable planets. It has two planets that orbit very close to the star itself, Teagarden star B and C. Both planets are theoretically almost twin planets of our beautiful Earth and could easily be harbour oceans of water. Since its discovery in 2003, Teagarden star has offered us a host of fascinating discoveries. Let's hope in the future this tiny, tiny red dwarf star with big ambitions continues to delight. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below, and perhaps next week your idea will show up. Take good care of yourselves, look after your family and friends well, and I'll see you on the next one.